The first book I would like to talk about is called The Rule of Four. I um, sadly don't have the English copy anymore. A wise man allegedly once said that the best friends are the ones who borrow your books and never bring them back. Um, I cannot fullheartedly agree with that because I truly miss that book. But at least now I finally got my hands on the translation into my native language, or one of my native languages. Uh, to be completely honest, I'm what they call a born bilingual, which has always been a bit of an awkward term for me because you're not born with the knowledge of the language. My mom's native language is Estonian and my dad's native language was Russian. But The Rule of Four is a book that uh, has a very awkward yet interesting significance to me. Uh, in a nutshell, the book itself is a story of a group of students at Princeton who embark on deciphering an ancient manuscript, which allegedly has in it deep and possibly dark secrets. Um, I remember somebody referring to it as a Da Vinci Code for intellectuals, which I'm not saying to undermine the importance of the book, such as Da Vinci Code. I read that one as well, uh, though to me the rule of four is still a deeper set of memories than with the Da Vinci Code. But I will talk about Da Vinci Code some other time. Now, for me, this book is important for two reasons. First and foremost, it was a book which uh, stuck with me after I saw it, the copy of it, for the first time. It was uh, summer of 2007. Oh, sorry, 2006. Summer of 2007 was when I started chasing it down again. Uh, long story short, as a soon-to-be graduate of uh, law school, I convinced my parents to pay for a trip to Helsinki, which is uh, across the sea or across the, the gulf, depends on which uh, side of the aquatorium you are. We call it the Baltic Sea. Sometimes we refer it to the Finnish Gulf, but Finland calls it the Finnish Gulf. And I did the dorkiest thing ever. I wanted to go for an opening of a conference of a research center at the University of Helsinki because it was my dream back then, which later materialized to go and study the master's program there. So my parents got me a ticket. I stayed over with the with a friend who was also my uh, thesis supervisor. And uh, while in Helsinki, I wandered into an academic bookstore, still one of my favorite places in the world, uh, in the Stockman Shopping Center over there. And uh, I ended up uh, stumbling across a copy of The Rule of Four, which I sadly couldn't buy because I had already picked out some books and my budget was full. The two books I did buy though that day were Kobe Buzzle's uh, My War Killing Time in Iraq and Sam Harris's The End of Faith, both of which I read the same summer as a uh, freshly graduated ensign with the Defense Forces. Um, quite suitable texts for reading in the barracks, I might say. So when I got out of the 
uh, military service, uh, which is a constitutional obligation in my country. I ended up as a master's student in Helsinki and uh, spent uh, half a year chasing down the copy they had sold out or stock or something. So, And I couldn't remember the title of the book. I remembered the layout of the front cover. And finally, when I got the copy, I went home and started or, well, to my dorm, which I called home, and uh, got into the book because I sort of felt like um, Smeagol from the Lord of the Ring, that I had found my precious and I'm not going to give it up so easy anymore. And that's the second reason I still cherish the memory of that book, is that when I started reading it, I could find so much to connect with. I've never studied in an Ivy League university and who knows, probably never will, but uh, to me, the exuberant expectations of those students and the backstories, uh, like for example, my dad, late father, used to read a lot. So for me, it was a um, special connection to read about a young man who undertakes an academic endeavor to not just please his father, but sort of... Uh, help him out because uh, one of the characters that had spent his academic career trying to decipher that text so it became a bit of a family curse I guess and it was a very vivid description and uh, also what inspired me was to find out that the authors had been mates at college and, and started writing it together and it was sort of a, a thing they shared and it seemed like a fantastic way of solidifying one's friendship. So um, I hadn't thought about the book uh, too intensively for years, but I remember seeing an Estonian translation of it for the first time some 10, 15 years ago. More like 10, I guess. And... Uh, I automatically thought that I have to gift it as a birthday gift or any gift to one of my best friends. So I did. He read it on a ship. And uh, when he got back from his voyage, he said that it's the most difficult book he's ever read. Um, so now I'm going to take a look and see, is it really that difficult in my native language? Because... Uh, I read it in a foreign tongue and now I will have a possibility to go on an adventure as hobbits do. Till next time, take care.